In this video, I'll show you how to create a click to reveal in Adobe Captivate that uses audio and is compatible with closed captioning. I love building a click to reveal inside Adobe Captivate. It's a great way to chunk out information for your learners into bite-sized pieces. And you can usually do this on one slide as long as you include uh, advanced actions. One of the problems though, if you decide to include triggered audio as part of your click to reveal, it's not going to be compatible with closed captions. And I've been thinking about this solution and what I've come up with is I've gone way back in time to how I used to build these back in the old days, still using Adobe Captivate, but an earlier version. Okay, so here's how I've done this in the past. And of course, when I have a requirement that there is going to be audio on all of the click to reveals, uh, I need to include closed captioning for accessibility purposes. So this is really the best way to do this. And quite frankly, one of the simplest ways because it doesn't require advanced actions or any kind of variables to keep track of. So here is the basic format. What I do is I have a slide where I put all my buttons and this could be the intro slide where I'm giving learners the instruction, click the items to learn more about each step. And once you're ready to continue, click the next button to continue with the rest of the project. Then I create a slide for each one of those reveals that includes the audio narration as well as the closed caption for that particular point here. Finally, I have the rest of the e-learning project, additional slides, what have you. So the first thing, let's take care of a couple of housekeeping issues here. I haven't added the audio for slide two and slide three here. So let's do that right now. We can just simply drag this over from my other window here. You will get this, uh, this notification that it wants to show the slide for the same amount of time as the length of the audio file. Uh, there are a few other situations where you might choose something different, but for our purposes here, we're just gonna click on okay. Similarly, let's do slide number three. I've got a separate audio file for that and we'll click on OK. So I'm going to add closed captions to the audio file for slide number two first. We go down to our timeline and scroll all the way to the bottom where the audio is. Let's extend the timeline a little bit just so that we have a little bit of blank space at the end here and I'm going to double click on the audio file which opens up the slide audio window. We can click on close captioning here and I'm going to go over to my script and simply copy the first sentence that is in this slide. So I'm going to place my playhead somewhere near the beginning here and click the plus icon. Now I can simply paste in the, the text, which is the first sentence. And I like to preview this just to make sure it sounds okay and of course matches what I just put in the field below there. Click the buttons to learn more about each step. You can press pause and then reposition the playhead so that you can add the next sentence. This happens to have two sentences on this slide. So I'll copy that from my script, click the plus, paste it in, and we'll preview it again just to make sure it sounds okay. Once you have fully explored this page, click next to continue. Okay, so that's good. Let's save our work, click close, and we'll move down to slide number three. And this is the first audio as well as the image that goes with our reveal for the first button here. Similarly, I've got some sentences to add to the closed caption here, so we'll go and go into the closed caption window. I'll select a point before the first sentence here and we'll copy that first sentence from my script. We'll click on the plus. Now this happens sometimes if there is no audio before uh, that point or, or where you've selected on the timeline. That's okay, nothing to worry about here. I'm gonna click okay and just go a little bit later where I know there's some audio and click the plus here. And of course now I can add that first sentence. This transition marker, which indicates when the next 
line of text for closed captioning appears. You can now move it to a little bit earlier uh, before the audio, so that works out well. I'm going to copy the next line of text that I have here. Let's play this again so I can see where we should start the next sentence. You can usually guess, but I like to be sure. Describe the behavior. Okay, so right about there. Let's click the plus and I'll paste in the next sentence. Be specific and tell the person exactly what it was that offended you. And then I have a third and final sentence for this particular slide. We'll add that in now. We'll preview that. This is an important first step and will help the person understand the problem. Okay, so we're good. I'm going to hit save at this point, but before I exit this window, I realized that I haven't set up closed captioning for this particular project. Uh, it would just go with the defaults, which might not be suitable for my slide design. So I'm going to click on this little CC settings icon right here from the slide audio window, and this will open up my closed captioning settings. And first thing I want to do, you can see I've got slide three selected. I want to make these choices universal across my entire course. So I'm going to go and select the entire project. I'm going to check override slide level settings with project settings. And now I can force customize the appearance of my closed caption settings here. So I'm just going to make a few quick changes here. Go with a different font, maybe a little bit larger. And my preference is white text on a darker background. Uh, I think it looks better. I might make this a little bit larger too. And I'm also going to show closed captions by default so that they're on right away. The learner won't have to press those buttons to add closed captions there. So I'm going to click apply. So instantly this setting is applied to all of my slides and I can now close this window and I can close the slide audio window as well. So here's what I need to do next. I've got these buttons on the initial slide, but I need those to be available on all the reveal slides as well. So the first thing we need to do is set those up to have the appropriate actions. I'll start off with these um, buttons on the slide itself here. We'll go to my properties inspector under actions, and we will change the success action to jump to a particular slide. We're going to start with slide number three because that's the first of our reveals in this click to reveal. And then uh, one by one, I'll simply change the next one to be slide number four. The one after that will be slide number five. And the one after that will be slide number six. I also need to do something similar with my back and next buttons. So I'm going to select those, go to the actions tab. And in this case, we'll choose jump to slide number one, and then I'll select the next button and choose the slide after all of the slides that contribute to my click to reveal. And that happens to be slide seven called reporting. So now what we need to do is copy all of these buttons to our reveal slides so that learners can click and navigate throughout the click to reveal regardless of where they are within the interaction. So I'm going to use the keyboard shortcut control C to copy these. And we're going to go down to the subsequent slides and paste those in. So now all my slides have this particular set of buttons across all of them. And the only problem, of course, everything is copied over perfectly. If we take a look at slide number three, you see my next button jumps to slide seven or goes to slide one if I choose the back button. And you can see that button number four goes to slide six. Uh, button number three goes to slide five. The only problem is when I copy and paste a jump to slide three button to slide three, Captivate realizes that there's a problem with that and it changes the on success action to continue. My solution to this is rather than change it to no action, I simply uncheck it as a button and then change its appearance to make it look like it's a selected button. So I'm going to choose a color and a color for the foreground. And we'll do the same thing on all of these slides here. So 
On the next one, we've got button number two. We'll uncheck uses button and we'll change that to look like it's selected. Do the same thing for button number three on slide five. And lastly, button number four, same thing again. We'll just make sure that it looks like a selected button there. So now I think our interaction is set up and good to go here. Let's do a preview of this project and see how it looks in HTML5. Sometimes people are unaware their comments or actions have hurt you. It's important to address discrimination or harassment as soon as possible. But bringing your concerns to their attention is usually enough to have them stop the offending behavior. Click Continue to proceed. Okay, so that's, there's our slide just before the interaction. Let's hit Continue. Click the buttons to learn more about each step. Once you have fully explored this page, click Next to continue. So there's our first slide within this learning interaction. Now what we can do is we can click these buttons. I'm going to show you that it doesn't matter what order you click them in. It will reveal the appropriate information. And when you're done, you can click Next and it will go always to slide number seven. So let's choose Describe the Behavior first. Describe the behavior. Be specific and tell the person exactly what it was that offended you. This is an important first step and will help the person understand the problem. And what's great, of course, is that normally a single slide interaction like this, not going to work with the closed captioning, but here definitely works. Let's skip number two for a moment and click on button number three. Specify the appropriate behavior. It's an essential step to explain what acceptable behavior would be and how you expect them to behave. Okay, and now we'll go back to button number two. Express your feelings using I statements. Don't just say the behavior was wrong. Tell them how it made you feel. Use I statements to help your coworker understand how their actions or comments impacted you. And once you've visited all the slides, you of course can click the next button. And instead of simply going to one of the reveal slides, it's actually going to take you to slide number seven in this case, our next slide in the lesson. Of course, it's important to note that not all forms of harassment and discrimination can be dealt with in this way. Harassment or discrimination that is openly hostile or of a sexual nature should be reported immediately. Inform your manager, second level manager, or human resources as soon as possible to ensure that prompt, appropriate action is taken. And there you go. So we have a learning interaction that requires no advanced actions. It also is accessible in that it includes closed captions for persons who require those, and you've got a solution that's going to satisfy your stakeholders as well. If you thought this video was useful, please like and share with your colleagues. If you need help with your next e-learning project, hire me. My focus is to create effective e-learning that achieves your business goals. Visit my website at CaptivateTeacher.com and don't forget to subscribe to my YouTube channel.